Uh, evening, everybody. Uh, I don't believe we have any apologies. No apologies uh, and there's no planned fire drill this evening. So if it does happen to go off, it's because the Horticultural Society or whoever it is downstairs is talking far too loud and scared the fire alarm. So, uh, and head that way or that way. Uh, declarations of interest, Janet. None that I'm aware of. Uh, Tim? No. Mr. G? Bob? None that I'm aware of. Paul? No. Simon? No. Tanya? Um, yeah, nothing that we're voting on, but obviously um, the skate park and the youth centre notices. I didn't miss you deliberately. You was hidden behind Tanya. Paddy? No. No comment. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, I'm just talking about the skate park, but any skate park update, so, but just kind of to be clear, uh, mm -hmm. obviously the skate park, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to switch the order around this evening, because Ross is here to give us an update on the Twinning Association, so I'm going to pull agenda item nine forward uh, and drop it in at four. Uh, she has to get off early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> do you want to take a few? No, I'll stand up, thanks. Yeah, cool. Right, good evening ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Ross Cruz. Um, I've been around this place for rather too long, probably. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, interrupting. I'm sorry, Ros. I yes. can't see any, I can't see anyone. Is that normal? Oh, oh yeah, on. we're coming in. Yeah, can one you, second. Can you hear Ros all right though, Tracy? I can hear Ros, thank you. I'd have liked to see her. Thank you, lovely, thank you. <laughs> You might have to come closer so she can see you. Uh, <laughs> she knows what I look like. <laughs> Thank you. Very white hair. Uh, right. Um, right back in the 1980s, we decided as a council that we would look for a twinning. Um, Susan Hayson was chairman at the time. I was vice chairman. And we formed a group. And eventually a twinning was made with Den Dungen in the Netherlands whilst I was chairman of the council. And then um, later, um, when George Hayes was chairman of the council, we actually twinned with Germany. It's 1990 that I first went to Germany in the company of George Hayes and Frank Case. Now, those of you who are long in the tooth might remember that uh, Frank Case was headmaster at Highdown School for several years. Uh, unfortunately, he died in post, but he was very keen to have a twinning with Germany. And when he met Harold Bartos, uh, who incidentally he met because there was a firm in Portugal called Gordano Rheingold, and uh, Gordano Rheingold had heard from their um, counterparts in Schweich or in the area of Schweich that uh, Schweich was looking for a twinning. Uh, so it's 1990 that the three of us went almost to the day to visit Schweich for the very first time. We've now been twinned for over 30 years. We would have celebrated 30 years but for COVID in this country, but we did celebrate last year 30 years in Schweich. And we are expecting to host families from Schweich in Portishead between the 3rd and the 8th of August. Now at the moment we haven't got sufficient homes to be able to accommodate a coach load. They would like to bring a coach load. Um, that's what they've always done in the past. Uh, and some of them have actually said that they're prepared to stay uh, maybe in a Premier Inn in order to come. But that's not what twinning has always been about. Twinning has always been that we went and stayed in a host family and they come and stay with us. The closeness of the twinning, unless you have actually taken part, is unbelievable. We've celebrated together all sorts of things. Um, the Dutch have come here when people have died. The Germans have come here when people have died. We've gone the other way about. Um, it is like an extended part of your family. What we ask you to do is to put up people in your home and look after them from the Thursday uh, to the Tuesday, I think it is. It's the third to the eighth anyway. Yes, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, 
we as a twinning association will take them out. <clears throat> Hopefully, if they bring the coach, that makes life very easy because they will go, go probably to the ship, jump on the coach, and a few of us will go out with them for the day, leaving you free. But it won't leave the weekend free. The weekend is the time for the host families and you will be expected to look after that family that you or the people that you've got coming to stay with you for a couple of days. It doesn't have to be, we've got to go here, we've got to go there, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, we've got to do the other. It vastly depends on what you request of us to the, the, and what you're prepared to give in the way of accommodation. I've got one lady who said, I'll accommodate a lady, uh, but she's got to be able to climb the stairs. Um, I haven't been and looked at her house, so I'm not sure whether it's a spiral staircase and particularly awkward or, or why she put it that way. Um, somebody else uh, has said that they'll do the accommodation and looking after, but they will only drive within Porter's Head. They won't drive out of Porter's Head. Um, so we have to, we, we're prepared to look for things that will suit you. Um, I don't know exactly who's coming. I'm hoping that I'll get that list before our AGM, which is on the 5th of March, which is Sunday week. So, Trash is a beautiful place to visit. It's not far from Trier. It's in the Moselle Valley. It's in the, the wine growing area. Um, and don't tell anybody and block your ears, Tracy. Um, when we very first started off with the twinning, uh, there was a, a coach that came from Schreisch, which was very, very heavy when it arrived. Uh, and it was very light when it went. And there were rather a lot of brothels, which ended up um, either at High Down School or in Frank Casey's garage. <laughs> um, it did help with funds. We have never, ever been reliant on the council for funds. In the very beginning, we had a loan which we paid back. This has never been a jolly on the council, ever. And don't let anybody tell you it has been, because it hasn't. I can tell you exactly what we've had in, in um, gifts from people, in that when, on that very first trip, the three of us went off to, to Shrish for the first time, P&O Ferries, I think it was, or Sea Link, gave, actually gave us a free passage there and back. Really big lot of money we had out of that. Well, it did help. Uh, and when we used Sally Line to go to Dendungan, um, at that time that, that went from to Dunkirk, from Ramsgate, um, we used to get uh, every trip we had two free meals in the nice restaurant. So, you know, which was shared around. So everybody has, had, has always paid their own way. There's never been a jolly. Um, we did get European grants at one time, but Porter's Head's too big. We don't get them anymore, um, and uh, neither do any of our uh, twinners in the in Europe get from Europe. I don't think anymore. They might get from the local municipality. Um, in fact, the twinning association currently have the most beautiful glass bowl, which we need to bring to the council at a full council meeting to show to the public as it's presented to you that came from Schweich for the, from that 30th anniversary. It is beautiful. It was handmade. We will need to give them something equally nice in return. Yeah. Um, they also, while we were there, managed to host all the people who went, there were only nine of us, uh, and all their associations. So there was over 100 people who met and had dinner that night, and that was not paid for by anybody in the group as such. So, I'm not asking you for money, I'm asking you for help and for publicity to um, find additional host families. We've told them we can accommodate 25 at the moment. Um, we may be able to accommodate more, we may have to accommodate less. But your link is Janet. Mm -hmm. Janet is your, your member who is on the Twinning As Association Committee. Uh, she also has travelled with us on several occasions. Ten years, yes, well, at least. Yeah. Um, and you have a very close friendship, don't you, with the, the Dutch people in particular? I, I'm the... Yeah, well, I, I, I loaned it 
less about the German link as it happens yes. for the simple reason that I've always dealt with the Dutch link. Um, the German link, we've, the, the, the chap who was doing that is, is too ill to, to do it now. So as chairman of the association, I'm here to, to speak about it. It's, uh, to be perfectly honest, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah, first um, yes, my only concern is that it's not well publicised. Mm. Um, I've spoken to so many people who simply don't know it exists, and it sort of bothers me that only nine people went. I'm sure that was that, COVID. Yeah. Okay. But um, I have actually actively looked to see how you can join and everything. And of course, I've been able to find out because of Janet, but most people wouldn't know and wouldn't know how to join. Well, so we, maybe that would help. You know, we we right. have spent a lot of time and effort in advertising in the past, perhaps mm -hmm. not so much lately. Um, we have need to do on social media. Well, that's not my skill. So, uh, <laughs> maybe it's Janet's skill, it's certainly no, not mine. It's definitely not Janet's skill. No. Let's, let's pause on the end of the phone over two seconds. <laughs> so, um, well, Tilly, if you were if you well, just going to we'd, we'd be able to do it together, Janet. Are the schools involved? Because when I did it, when I was a school child, that was, there was a lot more people, because obviously younger families, or is it a particular age It, it used well? to be, it's, when it first started off, it started as a uh, uh, with the Dutch link in particular, mm. with a pen pal link yeah. from Portishead, what is now uh, Portishead Primary, um, which was Slade Road. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, we used to accept in the autumn term, they would send a coach of children and probably a coach of adults as well, uh, or a double decker. Mm. Um, and those children would be paired off to spend time with an English family and, and that's how it started and there are people around the town now who will remember that and are still in contact with 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 their pen pals and um, and the like. Now the problem has arisen uh, that taking children away is no longer easy uh, and um, the when Margaret Hallett left Portishead Primary and so did Philip Lee the the new headmaster, who's now dead, uh, didn't, and that's nothing to do with the training, didn't <laughs> have the um, impetus or the um, will to carry on because things had got much more risky with carrying children anywhere. Yeah. The law has changed considerably mm -hmm. and school trips are much more difficult to organise than they used to be. And whereas maybe you could have done a school trip where um, and they've done, the, done it with a football club. Um, they could go and stay per se in a, a um, youth club or something of that ilk yeah. as a group. Going to a person's house yeah. is somewhat different. Yeah. We did it that the Dutch children came here first because they were a school year older. And therefore, um, it was easier for our kids to go in the May holiday um, after... <laughs> having accepted the Dutch children here, and also our parents had more idea about where their children were going. Mm -hmm. the, as far as the German link's concerned, we have never had any success with Bordeno with, with the German link at all. Um, when we went for the very first time as a group, we took the highlights and the lowlights, <coughs> which used to be singing, singing groups within the town, uh, and at that time we took two coach loads. Mm -hmm. and, but on that occasion, there were parents who travelled with the highlights and the lowlights mm -hmm. so that there was parental care within the house that they were going to stay. It's a great place. I think I think Patty's right. I think I think if you if you're going to encourage more people to come forward, I think she's right, you need to perhaps start mm -hmm. thinking about social media and then you could potentially get younger families that could carry things on over the years. But what I'm wondering is whether maybe somebody like you or somebody from the group and Tracy Fowler, who I'm pointing out on the screen <laughs> over there, because obviously the whole visit Porter's Head thing, I didn't know whether that's some way that maybe you could work together about publicising <coughs> it that way as well, and then that could then continue on to the social media. I don't know what you think. You're on mute, Tracy.
Sorry, put you on the spot there. She's still on mute. She's still on mute. Can I say something? We, can, we have YouTube? to put it on the council website and social media pages oh, as well. So we, we can do that as well. So, yeah. 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 Sorry, I have been looking for how I could put my hand up and I couldn't find it. So, and I'd be happy to help, Roz. So I'll drop you an email. There we go. That's fine. You do that. Thank you, Tracy. You've got my email address, I'm sure. I have, yeah. As a start, we should put something on our council website. We've been asking it, you know, just for a little article saying, like you said to us tonight, and how to join and what's coming up in the near future. And um, well, that's down yeah. to Janet. She's your well, rep. Well, the thing is that um, Keith sent something to Amy, and Amy asked for some more pictures, and then Keith had his stroke. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and since then, nobody else has been in touch with Amy with pictures, and I haven't got pictures. So we've got the blurb ready to be put up, but we need some more pictures. Well, so we can we can. We, we can, can find a picture. Out. We can get yeah. a picture of the, of, the, of the town you go to. Yeah. Just have just have the two towns you go into on either yeah. corner yeah. in the back as a backdrop, and having the words called overlay on the top of it. Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. So we can do that. It's easy. Can we do that? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get Amy to do that. We'll sort it out. Because I can put it up without the pictures. It'd be better than yeah. 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 Well, this is what I I think this I talked to Amy about this just before Christmas, a little while before Christmas, and. Um, I think then she got snowed under with something and I got snowed under. So we need to move forward now yeah. with that. It would be lovely to get that on there. Yeah, we can do that, definitely. I could probably send a few photographs from last time, but I, I don't tend to take photographs no, anymore. I think we just when you've been so many times, yeah. you only take... Yeah. I think I've got a photograph of the anniversary cake. <laughs> <laughs> that will probably encourage some people. Well, it's got a horse head one side and shrash the other. Yeah, with, well, that would, would be quite a nice picture to have as a background. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bob's obviously found photographs. Yeah, found loads of photographs. There's photos of the town. Yeah. Yeah. And Trier is even more beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Trier is a Roman town. Yeah. Um, Ros, I've got a space for the uh, vase already in the new cabinet. In yeah. the, in, um, it's got a glass um, section uh, in the middle, and I've earmarked one of those to put that lovely vase in. It'll be perfect in there. Yeah. Well, I, I knew you had a space because you told me that yeah. some while ago. So, Janet, the words. We need to bring it when people are going to be yeah. at a meeting. Yes. It'll be, yeah, that feels panny, but I think probably March, right, I suppose. But, yeah. Uh, <coughs> can you email the words again? To I Amy? haven't got them. Right, where are they? Um, Amy's got them. Okay. Well, Wendy and I will take, take it up with, with Amy. Is that all right? And we'll visit them to you to make sure you're yeah. happy with it, and then we'll get it on the website next week. Yes. The trouble is no. that um, during COVID, it all we didn't even know if it would start again. And then yeah. Keith had a stroke. What just when we were trying to start doing the the publicity and everything. That's fine. Is, we'll sort it. We'll help out as well we can. So yeah. Right. Yeah, if somebody sends happen. me the, yeah. the the email that they want me to send the stuff to, I'm R O S C R U S E. There's no I. Yeah. <laughs> co. uk send me something I will try and send you some of the photographs I've got which aren't many thank you Ross. great okay thank well, you Ross. Thanks, Ross. Thank, thank you very thank much you. may I be excused now thank you very much yes, yes. of course yeah. thank you for coming along it's much appreciated That's right. safe trip tomorrow yeah well I hope so thank you yes be careful on that motorway well, just had a new set of tires yeah, so that's a good start yeah. Bye. Cool. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, we're going to put Tracy up now. I'm to Tracy, <coughs> Tracy, we're going to bring you on now as well. Okay, it's thank you. Agenda, but it was a slip of the pen on that one. So we're going to drop it straight in now. If you're going to give us an update because it's part of the grant, second part of the grant that's due next month. If you can't get it up, I can hold the documents up to the camera. Right, come in. Just don't worry. There we go. Can you see thank that, Tracy? You. Yeah, thanks very much. That makes a lot of sense. So, um, so thank you. Yeah, I did. I did send these round in case we couldn't get them up. But um, there's the new front page for the visit Porter's Head, and you can see we've added a your to it purposely, just as an addition, so that uh, people don't feel it's just for visitors. 
And um, one of the councillors at the last meeting suggested we made the what's on a button on the front page, which we've done, and it's in red as well, so you can see it. Something else. Uh, oh, sorry, I was trying to click onto slide two there, but it doesn't work on my computer, does it? <laughs> Thank you. Something else we agreed to do was expand on the clubs and organisations. So we've given that page a complete overhaul. Um, when we came to council in November, there were 37 clubs and now we have more than 100 registered. I have to say I hadn't appreciated the amount of work that goes into making a form available for the public to fill in. Apparently, there's, there's lots of security you have to, to go through to um, and work on so that it, it works properly and we don't get lots of rubbish come through. So now when anyone clicks on clubs and organisations, they can just click on add your club and organisation and there is a form that's very simple to fill in. Um, they just fill that in. It comes through to us. We approve it and it uploads automatically onto the site. And that seems to be working quite well. We've shared that on social media and of course we will continue to do so because it makes our job a lot easier if people add their own groups to that. Moving on to slide three, we've done exactly the same with the what's on calendar. So if you click on that what's on on the front page or enter that, that section through any other of the pages on Visit Portishead, you get the calendar up and it says the first thing you see is click here to add your event um so you can do that and the next slide will show you the the form but i've just shown an example of of what comes up when you click on march you click on the 20 it'll show you all the different events you can click on one and get the full details up as you can see with the the speakeasy jazz club there so moving on to uh, slide four, you can see how simple the form is to submit an event. And actually it's exactly the same format when you're doing a club or an organization. So it's very simple for people to upload. They can upload images if they want to. If they don't, that's fine. It, it really doesn't matter, but, um, but it's all there for people to put as much or as little information on as they want to. And you can see just an example there. Once we had that live, we started sharing it on social media. And I'm, I'm very pleased to see, and thank you, especially Tanya Slatter for always liking when somebody recommends, if somebody's asking what's on this weekend or, or can anyone tell us where this is? Um, lots of people now are starting to say, or oh, if you've seen this site, visit Portishead. So um, we appreciate that it is starting to flow out and grow organically. So people are getting to hear about it. So moving on just to we did talk about the fact that not everyone is on social media. So we have done some print media before I left the resident. I managed to get a, a feature in on the community directory. We've also had some nice postcards printed and on the back. It says, dear reader, have you visited this site? Um, we've got these in the Lido Cafe at the moment. We've got them in the folk hall and we're starting to distribute them round to various public places, basically. We've also been putting half page adverts in the community programmes that are done for like the flower show, the spring show, uh, the arts festival and um, open gardens programme so that the community can, especially, I, I don't mean, sorry, I nearly said the older community, but a lot of those um, facilities are, are visited by everyone, but especially older people and perhaps they're not on social media. So we thought we'd target the community programmes as, as it's a community site. Um, we've also got a new Porter's Head magazine launching next next month um, because of the demise of the the current social uh, the current print media that we have. Tracy and I and Tracy is here tonight and um, decided that actually maybe we would launch our own magazine. It's going to be tough. It's it's never easy something like that. But the public is <laughs> asking us. They've been stopping me in the street and stopping me in the supermarket asking me to um, consider launching a magazine and if we can get the businesses behind us it means that we can have a regular spot on visit porter's head to start um, promoting the site regularly in in a magazine 
And to go alongside that, we've got the Enjoy Portishead podcast that will um, hopefully eventually be weekly, but it will start off monthly and that will always refer to Visit Portishead because the new magazine can be read online at Visit Portishead. So if we can bring things like that into it so that people have other reasons to visit the site, as well as just looking for various bits of information, if they read things, uh, magazines and listen to podcasts on it, we think it will grow our audience. So going on to slide six, what we plan to do next is um, uh, we've got the postcards. So next we will start organizing posters and banners to display in the town. So um, our plan is to try and get some out at least before the summer so that um, we can encourage visitors and then help them to find their way around the town. Uh, we'll continue, even though we've got the forms that are live and we will market those forms for the community groups and the what's on, we will continue to update those ourselves as well by contacting groups directly and adding them to the list or if we see anything on social media, finding out if we can add them to our list and the same with what's on. Um, I, I should have said when I said we put the um, what's on form on social media telling people we had quite a number of the pubs come back to us saying they would definitely use it and a couple of them have started using it so so that's good that it's actually working. Um, we also plan to update and develop the, the shopping section because we think then we'll get more support from the local businesses so our virtual high street section will will get updated and we want to develop the things to see and do before the summer so again visitors to the town will benefit from that do you have any questions is our event on there for the 27th of may <laughs> uh, is that the um well-being the coronation festival oh no the coronation festival isn't because um no one could give me very much information about it i'm afraid <laughs> I'll email you, Tracy. Thank you. Is this the Penny Fair? Yeah, yeah. I did ask. <laughs> Who did you ask? Out of curiosity. Um, well, I had a meeting with a. Well, Amy left the meeting. In all fairness, and um, uh, Laura, yeah, I was talking fine. to. I'll, so, I'll talk to um, you. And, yeah. But yes, please send it through. In fact, in fact. Amy can update that, upload that herself if she would like to, because I think the agreement we had is any events that are sent to the council, Amy would just forward on to us, and any yep. that you organise, you can update your upload yourselves. So I think we'll that's that, that's yeah. what we're doing. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tracy, I haven't got a question. I just want to say it looks amazing now. Oh, mm. thank you. Really we have. So we have worked extremely hard on it. Yeah, and it really, I mean, it was always, you know, I know you obviously you struggled for a long time to try and get it where you wanted it. And I know you had a lot of ideas about what you wanted it to be and just, it just never happened for various reasons. But yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously looked at it, like you say, when you post stuff on social media and things like, but just looking at it now, it's, there's, yeah, there's so much information on that and it's really easy to navigate, which I think is a massive, a massive bonus because a lot of sites really aren't. So yeah. Yeah, well, it has to be for me, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered asking Waitrose if you can use their television screen, their advertising screen? Well, Tracy does have a contact at Waitrose and she she has had a conversation, but as yet we haven't got very far with that. Okay. <laughs> I remember we talked about whether or not you get business sponsorship. Is that something you're looking to do now? Or yes, it is. And it was always our intention to do that. And that is how we will sustain the site. Um, mm -hmm. But we felt we needed to get it to a certain point before we could start asking yeah. for money. And we, we have just had um, a couple of companies sponsor a banner on um, one on the business section. And so it, it's definitely the way for, forward for us from now on, really. Yeah, that's brilliant. Any questions? Uh, Bob, first, and back to Janet again. Uh, yeah, Trace, I was just wondering, are you, are you keeping an eye on the notice boards? So obviously, if there's people advertising on there, it might be worth contacting them. 
that's always our intention, Bob. That's the yeah. that's probably the most labour intensive way of picking up events. Yeah. But yes, obviously, if we're out and about, um, we will do that. We just take a photo of the the notice board. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I did that in my rookie days as a reporter. That's how I started. <laughs> Back when reporting was reporting and not just yeah. stealing things off. Sitting at a desk. Yes, that's right. Uh, is there a chance of getting a North Somerset Council grant to support a, a new business? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, We're all laughing I at that know I don't know if the amount that we got would pay for the hours that it would take us to uh, go through the process, Janet. Okay, <laughs> worth, worth asking then. Definitely, definitely not, Tracy. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Tracy. Just had a quick glance. It looks really good. Thank have you. you. Have you come across burnhamonsea.com? No. Um, I haven't come across burnhamonsea.com and I will have a look at that now. Well, it not is right now, but is it's it doing... okay? Well, that's very interesting. Thank you. It's going for twenty odd years now, and I've been really looking on there for local news and events on there. And if you can plagiarise, steal whatever it is from their ideas, that'd be a yeah, bonus. It's always our intention to bring a, a blog and news page onto it, but it's just so much work. We have to find, you know, ha find the happy medium until we can um, sustain it financially, really. But yeah. lots of things. But the, the Visit Somerset um, website, you may recall, it actually has a little bit about Portishead and then all the information actually just says visit, visit portishead.net because um, they don't actually put very much on there at all. They just refer it to our site. Good. Yeah, please have a look. It's, it's well worth it. Um, don't you uh, worry. I've written it down, Tim. <laughs> you have They've got a lot of webcam on the... Uh, That's what I was about to come up with. The, uh, they've got a webcam. Great. Anyone else? Any other questions? No. Thank you, Tracy. No, it's cool. wonderful. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks Thank very much. Yeah, Makes I mean, it all perfect. worthwhile when people appreciate it. <laughs> And not only that, Tracy's my neighbour. The other Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Tracy. Uh, so obviously you've kind of, as, as, yeah, you've kind of. The caveat was that you come back and present and share what you've done, and then the next tranche of funds will be released. So I'll speak with Wendy, and we'll speak with Rachel, and kind of get that happening in the next kind of week or so. Thank you so very much. I will drop. Email coming from Nikki. Okay, I will drop an email because we we now have a, a proper bank account. It was taking an awful long time to get uh, a decent bank account up, so I'll send the new bank details. Cool. If you send that through to Nikki, okay, and then just uh, and copy in me, and then uh, we'll coordinate it and make sure it all happens. So, yeah. Okay, fabulous. Thanks very much. Okay, okay thank you all. Thanks, Tracy. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to go then, but thanks very much. I will leave now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And quick as well. It's everywhere it was to where it is now. So, yeah, more's better. Uh, so, that's kind of now skipping around the agenda, which is kind of added. Tracy was added, obviously added in lastminute.com, so, you know, as a freebie, it's a gift. A uh, couple of updates from me, obviously skate park, obviously as we're all probably aware, if you're not, then I suggest you've probably been abroad. Uh, started on Monday, they're absolutely flying along with it. Uh, stones down, etc. And there was a kind of bit of a ceremony today at midday, which I saw some uh, faces I recognise on it that was splattered all over social media. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're all on target for that. Everyone's happy with that. Uh, a lot of positive comments from around the town from what I can gather people going past saying you know what's happening and when's it going to be open and when can we start uh, skating on it will give us a few weeks uh, somebody said Addy said um, is there what did you tell me today about somebody who's who put something on social media about it you got it on there now I have but it's not really appropriate for this community yeah, pass it around anyway uh, so you know, as long as the weather kind of stays kind to us, the skate park will will be finished mid to late May. So uh, as a WASP group, obviously, 
we'll be meeting kind of on a every couple of week basis. Uh, so watch this space in the coming month for a provisional opening date. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, obviously, it may move a little bit, but yeah. Uh, play park updates, obviously Slade Road and the Lake Grounds. Obviously, Slade Road's coming along quite nicely, and it's all due to finish in its kind of seven to ten days or so. So hopefully by early part of March, first full week of March, it should be should be finished and done. It's opening on the 3rd of March. Definitely opening, is it? Because there's been an inspection this week, which has had some uh, questions yeah. raised, which we've got to deal with in between, but yeah. yeah. So hopefully the first full week of March it will open. Uh, Lake Grounds, again, is kind of ticking along quite nicely. We had a bit of a few issues with some mindless vandalism, uh, which is not ideal, but unfortunately, that's what we get sometimes. Uh, that's Sharon's met with them again this week. The kit is all arriving in in the coming days, obviously, and then kind of, you know, and they get fitted as quick as possible. Which kit? Uh, there was the roundabout just being sorted. That's the bit that's been vandalised around it. So that's been repaired. Uh, it's completely the, anyway. The two bits of kit, it's completely gone out of my head. My head's gone blank. And being repainted, uh, and being re, but the re, repainted is not happening until the weather's warmer because it won't take uh, properly. Uh, it's outside, outside, yes, but that is inside difference, isn't it? It's a workshop, don't go there on that one. Uh, so that'll be the end of March, uh, hopefully, by the time it's repainted. And it it's needs outside. to be outside, that's why it didn't dry. Well, that's not my fault. Should have a bigger workshop, uh, so. <laughs> So that, that will all be done. So kind of two of the main play parks, obviously Lake Grounds will be refurbished and looking good, ready for the skate park to open. And Slade Road has been brought back from the ashes, as they say, we're looking at a complete jungle uh, to actually repurpose to what it was all those years ago. Uh, so thanks to everyone that's been involved in both of them too, and obviously the officers as well. So it's all good. Uh, public participation, Carolyn. I'm assuming probably not, but I'll ask anyway. She's sitting there, probably gone to sleep. Thanks to Tim. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So we'll go on to item six minutes. The last meeting. Has everybody read them? Is everybody happy with them? I am. So I've gone back and approved them from my end. I wasn't there. You weren't there. You were ill. Yes. Yes, I'm happy. Happy. Yes. So I'm happy to propose the minutes are accurate. So we have a second, yes. Paddy. All those in favour. That's a yes from everybody. Absolutely. I will sign the minutes. Have you got them here? Yeah, I'll, I'll do them at the end. The minute, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Uh, item seven has come back because there was a bit of a typo. So we approved three thousand pounds last month. Actually, we should have approved three and a half thousand pounds. And we didn't afford to pick it up to the following morning when we kind of looked and thought, oh shucks, there's been a typo. Uh, so ultimately, this is to bring back the grant that was obviously under CM. On the 26th of January, uh, CM2435 was being incorrect at 3,000, it should be 3,500 pounds. So I'm proposing, as we originally agreed from the grants working group, that we approve the grant at 3,500 pounds. So effectively, all we're agreeing is additional 500 pounds in theory. So I'm happy to propose the change. So I'm happy to second Tanya. All those in favour? That's a yes. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll drop them a text message. I say it's all been sorted. Uh, right at my eight, obviously Slade Road playing area. There's been kind of a discussion behind the scenes between a few of us. Do we keep it the same? Do we look to rename it and do it something different? Uh, I'm going to hand over to Paul, who's Paul and I have kind of communicated the past week or so an email with some. We've got three options effectively. So I'm going to let Paul lay them out for you all. Yeah, so yeah, the first option is obviously leave it as it is. Um, the second option is just to decide on a new name, and Queen Elizabeth Park was suggested. Well, the third option would be actually say so more democratic option is actually ask the public, um, and maybe give uh, and do a little very short consultation, which would have obviously the current name, maybe one or two options as new names on there, and ask people to put in their own option. Um, it be it's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I think it's the advantage of a it's democratic, b it's a good, it's good publicity um, and gets more people to know about it. So you know, for a bit of effort, and who knows what people might come up with. Um, so, so that was my suggestion that we do that, which obviously needs a little bit of work. We can just do a quick poll on Facebook, and then we can just do our leafleting round the um, round the houses. And I think it's about three hundred. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've done it a couple of times before, so we can walk around with some leaflets, that sort of thing. That was that was, 
I, I mean, I think this the third one is the best person. I think I'd put it out to the public. But yeah, can you? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I would, I would either say keep it as it is, just because everybody has always known it as Slave Road. I've come here area. to say please keep it as it is. Yeah. Because that's what it is. You don't go out and you don't have a child called Bob. Then all of a sudden, call it cut his Dave. hair and call him Dave. I mean, <laughs> Keep it as it is, really, that's what I'm saying. It, it, otherwise, it's just going to confuse people, and I think it's just a silly practice. And I would rather it stay at Slave Road Park. Yeah, that would be my if you, want a, if you want a Queen Elizabeth Park or an Elizabeth Park, let's build a new one somewhere else where it's needed and name that Elizabeth Park as a new name and a new park. I think mm. that would be a far yeah. better idea. You know, I suppose we don't have any land to do. No, it. but no, I. That, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I, I, I don't have an issue with it going out necessarily for consultation, but my first choice would be, it's always been noticed, known as Slade Road Play Area, um, and we have now done something amazing with it. So I think it would be a real shame to then just call it something else now that yes. we've made it look I, amazing. I think it should stay as it is, really, just for that, just to save the confusion. Yeah. So, I <clears throat> totally agree with what Tim and Tanya have both said because I think it is well known as that and I agree with Tim if the, if it was going to be changed to Queen Elizabeth Second Park everybody would say well where is that expecting somewhere new but expecting somewhere much much bigger so, yeah. yeah so I would totally agree with both Tim and Tanya and it also looked better you know we're keeping the old name and having a new park there I think Personally, that would look a lot better all round mm. instead of just dismissing the name of it. Hello. So the question really is: Do we make a decision to keep the name, or do we ask the public? And if the public come back and say we'd like to keep the name the same, I think that'd be a waste be... of exercise, to be honest. Well, that's what we're here to decide. Yeah, well, it, yeah. So the, the opposite argument is. It's an exercise, so it means people get involved in it, yeah. and more people may actually want to go and actually know where it is and, yeah. and, and use it. So obviously there's a risk they might come back with a different answer. Yeah. And, and we could <laughs> highlight the difference between our consultations and those of North Somerset, where they ask people and then don't take any notice. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. sorry, but yeah, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. For me, this just fit, it does feel like a bit of a why are we why are we doing this? Um, and, and then in that respect, I think we could be criticised. Like, well, why, why are you having a conversation about this? Why is, it, why is this even a thing? Why are we even thinking about changing it? I think would be the question I would ask. Janet? It, it, it would cost officers time. We would have to possibly get something printed and given out to leaflets, so it would take time. So it actually is not a cheap option. I don't think it's that expensive. Yeah, I don't think it takes officers. No, I think we do it ourselves, but yeah. Printing some leaflets and distributing. It's not a cost of The game plays two ways on this one, because obviously this is just the park. This is also, this is not the field. Obviously the field is still in debate. Um, and I, I do side with Paul a bit on this one. I think we should highlight it and should ask the public. And yet it's more likely to come back a slave road field park but it's highlighting because that's the important part because we are still waiting for the decision on the field. And if it was showing North Somerset that we mean business and the public want that whole area, then there's a perfect opportunity, simple as yeah, that. We could add something at the end of it. Would you like to make a bigger park with the yeah. uh, North Somerset yeah. Council? Yeah. That's a good one. I don't think we can. I think there's already been a consultation on that park and we've done that. But they're already, start, they're already saying that they might consider another consultation on that. Well then that's up to them, it's their land isn't it? We can't, we can't, cons we can't consult on their land if we, if we have no say in what happens. So if 100% if of people say we want it to be this, it's not, that's not going to happen because that's not some sort of decision to make and then we will just look ridiculous it's like why did you bother asking us if nothing was going to change so i think we need to just focus on the play out the bit that is ours mm. um and mm. decide what we want to do there i think more people know where it is now people have started to ask the question on social media the, the pictures that went up showing it being 
you know, the new equipment going in and stuff. There was quite a lot of traction from those. The people that have lived here forever know exactly where it is. They've always known where it is, and that's obviously why, you know, they always know that that's what it's called. Um, so yeah, no, I, I just, I just can't see a reason why we would change it. We're not changing the lake grounds because we put new equipment in. I just, yeah. We'll see. Well, that's Dave's pool, isn't it? <laughs> I think I think Tanya's on the point now. I think you know people are starting. It's starting to get traction. People are interested. They're following it. But what are they following on social media? The news about Slade Road. Mm. So you know, I'm not totally against going out and asking whether people want to. Maybe you could go out to Constellation and say, you know, do we keep it as Slade Road play area, or do we rename it? Lovely. That was it. That was effectively it was going to be pretty straightforward. Do you want to call you like another name? Here's an idea. Um, that was all. Yeah. My view would be I would keep it a slave road. <coughs> That's what everybody knows it as. Yeah. Seems a bit of consensus. So. Yeah, I think the consensus is the fact that we're going to keep it as should keep it as it is, isn't it? Well, I mean, I don't know what does anyone but, else. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I get the point. Particularly, I'd say I don't know. It's on. I don't see it on social media, obviously. But yeah. if it's trending on social media, it's getting some traction. Yeah, yeah. Then it kind of negates the point of trying to change the name because it, it will then cause confusion. Well, where is it? So I, I get Tanya and Tim's point particularly. Well, there was a, there uh, was somebody I think wasn't there that said they passed they were passing with their child and they'd seen the work and they wanted to know how they could get involved and um, somebody yeah and who you know they wanted to help and stuff so you know again they they didn't know it existed until the work started and now they're like wow this is amazing i want to help kind of thing robin gilmore by any chance robin, uh, yes or something it's a canadian like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well that's yeah. when it was brought up i said even if we change the name people will still carry exactly. on exactly yeah. and i said it's a bit yeah. like the second seven crossing <laughs> nobody calls the prince of wales whatever it is no and the colston hall i'm sorry it's the cost will hall. always be the cost yeah. yeah. so yeah, yeah maybe it's it just feels like tim said like a bit of a wasted exercise to me waste, yeah, yeah. Okay. so we can that idea then yeah yeah i don't i mean yeah. if somebody um, yeah. if, if yeah. nobody's persuaded me to, to think differently no. if anybody's got an amazing reason why i'm happy to be it's just an idea that's just been floated around yeah, and asked the question yeah. so as yeah. you know it's we could have decided behind the scenes and done it, but actually we wanted to talk to everybody about it, yeah. engage everyone's opinions, which is kind of what we've done. And I think unanimously everyone's kind of saying, let's keep it a Slade Road and let's not change what works. Uh, one question off the back of it, obviously, bizarrely, I've never actually not been up there yet, so oh. there's one person that does need to go up there. Uh, I know. Uh, is there a sign there now that kind of points its way to people that actually generally don't know where it is? Is there something we can kind of do to signpost it up towards that next level? Yeah, we should do some. Cause yeah. Obviously, because the main the main access from the high street is up to a little footpath mm. between them two houses, so it's not obvious at all. Mm. Finger sign there. The the, 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 <laughs> the difficulty will be that that land doesn't belong to us. So although the play area belongs to us, yeah, I'm not sure how much of the access lane does. So I think it is. You're right. It's an all summer. I remember Sharon yeah. showed me the. Could you ask Sharon see if we can? Go to our friends and ask them to. Well, I wanted to just worth just bypass Sharon temporarily because he's on holiday anyway. Go straight to John Flanagan and ask him, do you have any objection to us putting a sign post, finger sign up to direct to our play park, please? I don't, they can't, surely they can't say no. I mean, why would they? Is it worth having one going by having two houses as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but yeah, both. Yeah. Well, there are three en three entrances effectively uh, on four. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You might actually find that you might get more traction through the uh, what's she called Shelley Lee, mm -hmm. the yeah. area offices. Yeah. So, yeah. We don't ask, yeah, if we just yeah. the question, then we yeah. So, sense is that we're gonna can the idea yeah. then of renaming yeah. it, but we will ask North Somerset about putting some signposting signs up then. So, yeah. okay, yeah. we shall leave that there and say no more on that one, and we'll bring it back. If we have an answer next month, mm -hmm. uh, with an answer of what we can and what we can't do, obviously because there'll be a budget required for that, obviously. Well, so, yeah. You just save two hundred pounds then. Well, if we put signs up, you definitely won't save two hundred pounds. <laughs> and if we do, at least it will get done this year, and not you know, some set in some, you know, <coughs> eons <coughs> in the future. Yeah, Janet, to put the post up. Yeah. Uh, obviously we've done item nine already uh item 10 uh wendy's going to talk on because wendy and lynn have done a lot of work since the meeting that we all had last time around we kind of get feedback 
I've had a number of conversations with Wendy about it, particularly who's then spoken to Lynn. Uh, so if you scroll down your agenda, you shall see the paper and an Excel document, which Wendy shall now talk through. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so Lynn and I, although we weren't at the, your last meeting, we uh, listened and uh, listened very carefully to the points that you raised. So we went away and with Sue's help as well, we've gone back and gone through everything as carefully as we possibly can. Um, Lynn has done some further work uh, talking to local organisations to see whether we can get some of these quick wins in um, without costing any money. Um, and she's done a fabulous job of rejigging everything for you to make it as, as clear as we possibly can. Um, and she's come up with some very quick win uh, actions that we could take. Um, I think from my point of view, just to sort of add to this, I think it's a, a useful thing for the town council to be actively looking at carbon reduction. Uh, whether we uh, agree a long term plan or not, um, I think we ought to be working with other organisations to at least be seen to be doing something. We've all got responsibility for it. So these quick win actions here, she's got um, virtual climate hub. Uh, which I know Lynn has already been working on because we've been talking to North Somerset Council um, and various other organisations with that. So that could actually roll along without too much further effort. Um, Lynn has been hunting out um, uh, outside funding for other organisations and is suggesting that we could quite easily put together a flow chart for other organisations to follow so that they can actually go and get funding, um, which is, yeah, we, we're doing it for our other mm. things, so we could do one for this. Um, we're updating the Town Council website at the moment. It wouldn't take too much to put some signposting on our website for things that is, are actually going on in the town and, again, linking it to other websites that are doing the same sort of thing. Um, the water refill station program, uh, Lynn's been working very hard trying to get some other organisations involved with this. Um, and we've already had some yeses, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah, I'll let Lynn elaborate in a minute. Um, the adult clothes swaps, we very much took on board um, the comments about the um, local charity shops. And I think what we're sort of proposing here is can we just do it as a one-off let's see how it goes can we just try it um if there's no uptake on it or it doesn't work or we can't get the volunteers then okay that one we can shelve and put to to one side but if we can get um people doing this you know it's it's a good thing to do um a repair cafe um we've actually already found somebody who's more than happy to do this and in fact so enthusiastic that they want to do it they've told Ben they're already doing it so um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's quite a good one really <laughs> um so yeah, yeah there's two venues there yeah, yeah there's two venues for that yeah. and then um <laughs> the final Honestly. final part of this was was to sort of trying to do something that we can do over the next six to 12 months. Again, that's not going to cost the town council anything to do, um, but that we can involve other organizations to um, take forward. Um, some of the uh, things that we've listed on there might seem a little bit uh, bold, large. Um, however, I think if we can get the momentum going, other things will follow and other organizations will be able to step in it's it's very much not about us doing it it's enabling other people to do it and pointing them in the right direction and making sure that we've got some sort of collaborative plan to show that we're actively looking at our carbon reduction um, without causing us to have to do too much with our resources um, but 
it's something very positive for everybody to do. So I shall sort of step back now and then I know Lynn and Sue have worked hard on it and you've been meeting all sorts of people, so. Anything you guys want to say in it particularly that when is not said? No, I think you've covered all bases really, but just to reiterate that we have got things lined up ready to go for all of these. Um, we have been around speaking to people. They're all keen to do this. All the venues that we've spoken to for all these different things, they're really keen to get involved. Certainly in respect of uh, the clothes shop, the venue we've spoken to there, they just saw it as a complete win-win. It's a win for the community, it's a win for them, and it's a win for the carbon uh, reduction thinking as well. So, and everybody that we've spoken to have just been really enthusiastic and they can't see any blockers with any of it. Um, in respect of the water refill stations, uh, three, I think we've got three people wanting to do it. And again, there is no, they've got no problem with uh, refilling up people's water bottles. And we can do a really simple, pragmatic way of that, because mm -hmm. there is actually an official way of doing this, like there is with everything. But the simple, pragmatic way is simply, they just fill up the water bottles. We list it on our website, we create a sticker for them. That is the simplest, pragmatic way. And the venues look at me as if to say, well, yeah, it's, it's, they're really keen to Easy. get on board. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the repair cafe. So there's lots of those going on around North Somerset. We've got Yatton, Pill, uh, uh, Clevedon. So there's lots of repair cafes going on all around us. Um, so we've got lots of models to learn from, work with, and talk to about the models. I've been to the one at Yatton to see how that works, mm -hmm. um, and it's brilliant. And it's actually, it's growing out of the space that they've got. So they've started, they've learned from it, and it's growing out of the space mm -hmm. that they've got. Um, they work on a donation basis, so it becomes self-funding. So, and it's working really well. And the way they do it at Yatton is they actually coincide it with uh, the market. So people are coming to the market and people are bringing their lamps or clothes or gadgets or whatever to fix as well. So um, yeah. everybody I've spoken to is just really positive and very keen to engage. And, you know, and I'm hoping to source funding for them to help them if, for whatever they need. Where are they going to? Sorry. Yeah, I think from me, thank you for the work that's gone into this by obviously, you know, Lynn, Wendy and Sue. I know we obviously we've been exchanging emails for the past yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Uh, there's an immense amount of work gone into this to re kind of build it from what it was a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I think it's a lot better personally. Uh, I think it kind of explains things in a bit more detail as well and kind of, yeah, and I'll say I got ambushed the other night when I walked into a meeting and says, we're having a repair centre for the council here. Oh, uh, why? Well, I'm like, okay then. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, thank you for me. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I'm, yeah, this one on me, but yeah. Uh, come to Paddy first. I think Paddy was first, then you, and then Janet. Yeah, Paddy. Yeah, I mean, it's immensely better than what we saw last time, and I do appreciate mm -hmm. all the work that's got in, gone into it. Um, I have got a few questions. Um, I'm um, a bit concerned about the repair cafe um, because you said you've got a venue, but the problem with the other repair cafes is not a venue, it's finding the right people with the right skills who are prepared to give up their time and who haven't, uh, don't run businesses doing that, in which case they'd be doing it for nothing. And um, the problem that I well, certainly got in Pill is electrical repairs because you have to be certificated. So find your repairers first and then worry about the venue, I think, is, would be the way I'd do it. It's not easy to find people who are sufficiently skilled. Yeah, so um, my so thinking was easy, yeah, to get the venue so we could come to you and say we've got people that are ready to go and on board. And mm -hmm. then then we're going to put a shout out for uh, people to help do it. So yeah. um, the venue, particularly um, sort of a slight change of tack, but the venue for the clothes swap, they're ready to share it all over their social media. 
mm -hmm. soon as we've uh, got agreement to go through. So the same model could apply for the venues in question for the repair cafe mm -hmm. to work with them to share it over their social media. So it's like a two pronged attack. So we can publicize it, they can publicize it, and then we could just start to, to get the people together. Yeah, it, it does take a long time, that's all yeah. I can say, because uh, as I say, if you run a business doing electrical repairs, you're not going to be too happy mm -hmm. about doing them for nothing, um, mm -hmm. and unless you're very benevolent. Um, the clothes swap I've, I've mentioned before, um, as, as Wendy said, best to start off, see if it takes off, because there mm -hmm. is no doubt it will have an mm -hmm. impact on the charity shops. Um, I was a bit concerned with any clothes left over will be shared between charity shops. Please go through them first. So they won't um, have anything that is damaged, um, stained. Yeah, you know, so don't, don't just dump them on. No, the so what we did with the children's clothes swap, that was all sorted before the people came in. So anything that was not of, of value, well, it wasn't perfect. even put out on the tables. Yeah. And there was only one or two items that that yeah. happened. And the rest of it was all sorted and with the clothes the children's clothes swap we have my carpet was full of bags that was left over but that was all shared amongst all the charity shops around four to seven so we take the same model sure I've, I yeah. couldn't believe how fussy they are but they are incredibly fussy yes. um I, I suppose um my other points really are to do with the fact that you, you're always saying they're cost neutral, but they're going to take staff time. You've got quite a few instances where allocate time for, allocate time for, um, you know, we need a project manager, a project officer. I'd like to have some idea, I mean, I'm not against it, but I'd like to have some idea of what sort of time you're expecting the members of staff to spend on this. Um, and then we'd have an we idea can, of look at what it costs us. Yeah. Yeah. We, can, we can have a look at that, Paddy, that's no problem. I can do some yeah. um, staff cost analysis. Let's follow up on that. Some of these we look at, they need a little mini business case. So if we're going to decarbonise the buildings, obviously there's going to be a cost saving. So Absolutely. We to, yeah. Not only have we got a cost staff cost, but what benefit are we going to get? Yeah. And then obviously, if it's a huge benefit, we should be doing that one first. But, Okay, so yeah, my, my last point is you've got other tasks, read the neighbourhood plan. I was a bit miffed about that. Oh, I thought everybody had read that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's really laughs> <it. laughs> if you can't sleep, go to the neighbourhood plan. It's brilliant. Can I borrow a copy, please? <laughs> so, and then Janet. Yeah, I was just going to add about the repair cafe, is, is that. Um, we thought it was best to go and see if there was a you know, venue or more that would do it. And I know that we had, we met with one place um, and they were very enthusiastic. We also had contacted another one and they, I think, are also very enthusiastic. They are in two completely different places. They and the repair cafe would be on different days of the week. It's only it's once a month. Um, and yes, we would have to find the right people mm -hmm. to do that. Um, one of the things that is very popular is um, somebody with a sewing machine and you perhaps want something, a uh, hem repairing or curtains or something there's a bit of work or something like that you can bring that there it will be repaired for you and say if you have a small electrical item that perhaps needs perhaps the the wire going into the plug or you know something you simple like have that. anybody doing that unfortunately well i've i was just giving that an example yeah. and obviously i have used I mean, the wrong the crazy, wrong but, the wrong example yeah. but there there could be um, something um, that that was very simple um, so so yes the, the the people um with anything to do with the electrical they will be properly qualified mm. and everything else you won't get just somebody coming off the street so i can do that we will be very careful of oh, course sure. who is is employed um, and also what would happen is that 
they would be asked for a donation for the work that has been done and hopefully then that would cover the cost of you know of perhaps hiring somewhere or something like mm. this or, or somebody something yeah that's like a model that. that works mm. yeah 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 okay Janet, thank Can you, Sue. Can I ask you what your venues, who, where your, which your venues are at the moment you're thinking about? I don't know. Am I able to say? Oh, yes. Um, yes, I, I don't think that's a... Don't see why not. Yeah, but a repair cafe, so there's two venues. There's one at the Lido, yeah. which would be a Monday or a Tuesday, one of the days where they've got slower trade, so it brings people into the Lido. Yeah, probably, I think it was a Monday. Yeah. And then the second venue is actually the library. Because they that we can you we can run that to coincide with the uh, farmers market yes. on the second Saturday of every month. So and um, potentially they've got that big room with the doors open mm. out to the Potter Garden. So it could it's got the massive potential to be a really cool vibe going on there on the second Saturday of every month with the market, mm. the repair cafe. Um, we haven't talked to them about any any detail yet. We've just floated the idea. They're very very keen to get involved. Um, and they're actually going to speak to North Somerset because they're found then North Somerset, mm -hmm. um, and they they're going to go ahead and see if they can get if there's any funding that they can get to cover the cost of the electricity. Mm -hmm. like, but they're really keen to get involved. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. So back up the agenda. Control what it said now at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> not really, well, kind of a question. I mean, Paddy was saying yeah. about wanting a bit more information. I know the recommendation is to approve this. Is it no, but that was my question. What, what are we actually approving? Yeah. There's a kind of list of stuff you're going to be getting on with, but that's fine. But are we, what are we actually I think approving? my understanding is from Wendy's and to me to Wendy's, we're just literally items one to six, effectively. The, the other bits at the bottom is, is, as you've said, is part of a bigger plan and a lot more work is needed in terms of if we already go for the, you know, carbon bit, you need to put a whole business case together, which is a mammoth amount of time. So I think it's worth doing. I think ultimately is we're looking to approve to go ahead with items one to six and get going with this cafe, closed bank, etc. What about the ability to apply for yeah, funding? Oh, on funding. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 So that's included in the proposal then, Ben, is that correct? The proposal is to include that carbon reduction plan, which is the longer bit that Paddy was talking about, yeah. wanting to know the cost implication. So I think we need to change, if we're not going to vote actually on that right Can now. change it a little bit to do one to six? To just to approve the short term to project. Ensure yeah. sure we've got funding for this. And then to bring back more detailed yeah. Carbon reduction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so split it up. Yeah, split yeah, it too. Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be okay. I think, I think so, yeah. Sorry, can I have one other thing? Up? I mean, we've talked about doing the buildings for ages. To me, if we do the buildings, it will, it will generate some savings, which we could use to invest in projects. So, personally, yeah. I would like to see the building decarbonisation put in the first right part. Right at the top. Right okay. at the top. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was good. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Right. Well, that's something we have kind of talked about, mm. isn't it? And obviously, we've, we've put energy saving bulbs in new lights have gone in, but again, yeah. we're, not, we're not, we don't actually know what the rewards are really because nobody's really yeah, told us. There it, was some yeah. work done, but it was, it was just before COVID. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, intuitively, looking at the building, there must be some savings to be made so we can get those done first. So, so, you know, we can generate some good savings. Yeah. Sure. <coughs> so, yeah. we're going to have like seven items now. So, the, so the, the recommendation will be then to look to approve items one to six and also include to put the business case together for the carbon reduction plan and apply around the funding that fits around that yeah. effectively yeah is that why everybody's happy with as well yeah okay did you get that yeah got it so say so recommendation is then we'll improve we look to approve items one to six uh also to include the carbon reduction plan obviously and, and just go out to apply for the funding that is available to to put some of this on uh, which obviously again is officer time, but I think go back to Paddy's question. Uh, Wendy will come back to that, obviously what officer time is involved on that one. Uh, I'm happy to propose the new amended motion. Somebody happy to second it? Janet, all those in favour? That is everybody. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank and again, thank you, so you three of you, and particularly Lynn and Wendy, that yeah, have done an immense amount of work in the background on this yeah. one. And Sue for meeting people with Lynn, me being accosted. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and that is not the last item. There's one more, the Wobbin item. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you all read the report? Yes. Have you got any questions on the report? Yes. Yeah. Go on then. No, it's only a, a suggestion. I was going to say we welcome suggestions. Um, what I've said is that the majority of the report details meetings, workshops, presentations and so on, which are very useful and necessary. But what I'd like to see more about is what these activities actually do to improve people's well-being. Right and what benefits they brought. Um, there's a little bit I noted on page four and a little bit on page 13 of stuff how it's actually impacting the residents. Yeah. And then there's an enormous amount in the middle about numerous meetings and workshops and get togethers. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. But I'm not so interested in that. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, funny enough, Paddy, I had the same thought. I was kind of reading through it, thinking, why am I reading all about somebody's meetings? I'm, it's lovely, like you said. And actually, for the initial report, maybe, it's useful to see that the people that are being met with. But actually, it feels like I don't need to know what they're doing day to day. But as Paddy said, I want to know, I want to see the evidence of the impact. Yeah. And it's like anything that's done, anything around well-being, and particularly if we're getting funding and things for well-being, um, we need to see that it's having an impact. Yeah, that's the most important thing for me. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and one of it also on page seven, I have already gone back to Laura. Obviously, Tanya knows she was copied into my email. Uh, which is regarding the kind of comment regarding groundbreaking and the skate park. I've kind of gone back and respectfully said politely. No decisions have been to be made on the skate park by the council. It is a unilateral decision between the council and the skate park directors, mm -hmm. being me, Tanya, and Ali. So I've been quite clear on that. That yeah, this is a joint thing. So if, if something goes on there, fine. But I would like to know about it before. Sure. Yeah, sometimes the, the good thing is that Laura asked us first. Yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying. But yeah, so that, that's all I'm saying. I'm, it wasn't a negative. I'm just saying that. No, no. I want us all to be involved in it, so it's not just kind of <coughs> one going one way, one going another way. We're kind of joined up. Can I just actually add to that as well? The youth centre, obviously, two of us are youth centre representatives, mm -hmm. so we are kind of the links into the youth centre. So again, just kind of reading about a meeting that happened with the youth centre. It's great, lovely, no problem with that, but it would be nice to kind of be somewhere sure. in that conversation. Sure. And if I can add um, about the children's centre, both and Tanya yes. and I are the council's reps right. on the right. So yes, it would have been used great. To I think what well. we're saying all kind of three or four of us is the fact that there needs to be a little more collaboration from Laura mm -hmm. out to councillors. Yeah. And I did kind of voice this a few weeks ago and we all met, I say all of us, about the uh, the the funds that we're creating. I said, look, we need to collaborate here and talk. Mm -hmm. It was kind of noted and I kind of I say, I've seen this and it's like, I did make the point then that, you know, well, where's the, my comment was regarding Tanya and Nicola. Well, they sit, they sit on the youth centre bit. There should be some link here where I shouldn't be being told by just you. I need to know from others as well. Uh, so I, I just think, yeah, I think a bit more devil in the detail yeah. and collaboration with us and actually talk to us a bit more yeah. and not just as we, as well, I seem to get it, to fired an email and said, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we have a chat about it first? Uh, you know, I'm not being controlling with it. I just, no, I'd no, like to no. know a little bit more information about it and just kind of, because yeah. it may not be being fired at the right person. Yeah. It may need to be go to other people because they may be able to offer more than what, say, I could offer or what Janet or Paul or whatever could offer. So, you know, there, there are a group of us here. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. no, that's fine. And the community events, I mean, to only have one community event on there, well, there's quite a lot cracking off. Mm -hmm. So again, I think we just, I think we need a bit more detail. I think it's a great start. Let's be positive. It is a good start. It's been a but, huge learning curve for her. Yeah. Yes. But let's kind of have the collaboration bit. But yeah, Lee is the, the those of us that are linked into various users. Yeah. Things. That's that's kind of why we 
Why we're there? Why we're yes. there? Yeah. So, yes. Yes. But I think that the 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 issue for for Laura, as far as I can see, is that she didn't know these things. Well, and mm -hmm. now she is beginning to. Maybe that's you know. Yeah, a, information flow. Yeah, maybe that's something that needs to be considered as well because she mm -hmm. should know those things. Yes. Yeah. Well, Paul and I have been feeding her information about all sorts of things, but we haven't fed her information about that. She's had such a lot to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all on the website. Who we are linked yes, to and what what true. committees yeah. and things we sit on so yeah great. Not, okay yeah uh, um one thing i do uh, want to say actually sorry ben just jumping in um though is the breakfast bit um that's already working really well so cool. thank you for that um so, yeah no that yeah. obviously came at us and obviously so the, the grant work the grouping with apologies paul you went here i know you're otherwise engaged on a meeting so because there was three of us here we agreed that it was the right thing to do because kind of they need to kind of get going with it and keep it going. So yeah, just as an information item, because it's obviously under the delegated powers that Wendy has, that we authorise the grants for £1,830 for the youth centre to fund Breakfast Club for Children, obviously not to four. So that is up and running and yeah, good. Yeah, it's working if well. We They've could... got a few regulars. Have they? Cool. Yeah, 